What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the In The Round Podcast. It's your boy, Matt Burrill. Episode number 97. Almost at episode 100. Pretty crazy. We have got two guys on for today's episode. Our old pal, Dylan Marlowe, and his tour manager, his right-hand man, Tyler Collins, also known as Screech. And uh, I've known these two for a while. We moved to town around the same time, and it's been really cool to see all that Dylan's been doing and all that Screech has been doing with Dylan. They've been out on the road with all kinds of acts, uh, most recently the, the Dylan Scott tour. They got the Cole Swindell tour coming up, and uh, super excited to uh, share their story with you guys. Lots of laughs on this one. Lots of good conversation. Got to tell you all about our sponsors, MRL Music Group, our boy Mike Allen, helping out with tour support, logistics, booking shows. He does it all. Hit him up, mrlmusicgroup.com. We've also got our friends at Whale Tail Media. Dylan's actually a part of our Whale Tail Media takeover that we recently had. Super stoked for that one. So y'all be sure to check that out. Whale Tail Media, they take care of it all. Whales, Gracie, Beezy, the whole crew, we love them. Speaking of great content and great people, Mitch Wallace with TDMA, the digital marketing agency. You've probably noticed we've gotten a facelift recently on Instagram and TikTok. Mitch and his boys are the ones to thank for that. If you need help with your stuff, hit up Mitch Wallace at Wallace Mitch, TDMA, the digital marketing agency. And last but certainly not least, our boy Grady Saxman with Saxman Studios in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Be sure to check them out at SaxmanStudios.com. Also, shout out to Trey Lewis for letting us use the DM Monday Podcast Studios. Be sure to check out the DM Monday Podcast. Now, without further ado, we're going to get into it. It's episode number 97 with our boys, Dylan Marlowe and Tyler Collins. So how, how the hell are you boys doing? You good with that microphone, Dylan? I think so. You're going to have to learn how to talk on the microphone like that. You're going to be doing radio interviews and shit before you know it. I know, learning out how to... It. Learning out how to figure it out. Learning how to figure out. See, Screech is all set up and ready to this go. This is my second podcast. First one doesn't really, I mean, it, it counts. What was, but what was your first one? It was with his little brother, actually. He He's tried to do that, the old, uh, oh, yeah. he tried to build up the podcast thing. I don't know what if was, he's. What was it on? Like, what was he doing? Just having uh, different was, people on? It, yeah, well, it was back home, so it's kind of small, but it, he called it like dialed in. It's talking about like hunting. Talking about hunting. Yeah. Okay, which perfect for you guys. Yeah. It makes, so, I mean, it makes total it, yeah, sense. For sure. Then we kind of slowly trickled into Bulldogs because it was football season. Yeah. Yeah, which it was a good, been a good... Um, it was good to be a dog. It was a good year to be a dog, good year to be a brave. Right now is a good time to be a, a New York Yankee, yeah, which I'm very are, happy y'all about. Y'all are killing it. I looked at y'all's stats the other day. Y'all are like... Which, it'll, it'll be good to be a Yankee until which, you play Which us. just leads... <laughs> I don't know if either of us will get... Just the way baseball fucking works, man. Like, the Astros fucking still scare me, and like, I don't know, it's... With um with the Yankees, I get so hyped every year, and then they always fucking let me down. This is the <laughs> longest drought we've had in my lifetime. It's been 13 years since we've won, which makes me sound selfish because what you Georgia fans dealt with for so long without winning a title. <laughs> Baseball and football. <laughs> Baseball, time. football, every, everything, man. But you guys are both from one of my favorite towns in the country. People always ask, where's your favorite place to go, Matt? I always, I always say, I'm like, oh, going home's cool, but going to South Georgia, there's nothing like playing to a drunk, college, rowdy <laughs> crowd with – Critters everywhere. Great place. <laughs> we we love Statesboro, Georgia, and that's where you guys are from. So yeah. What, yeah. what was it like growing up in a place where country music... I mean, you can't tell the story of country music the last 20 years without mentioning Statesboro, Georgia. Just the guys and girls that have come through there. What was it like growing up there? It was nuts. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was country. It was, it was uh, country and buttered biscuits. I mean, dear Lord. I mean, <laughs> yeah. whenever you, like you was t- talking about favorite places to play and talking about State Sproul in the Blue Room, it's like you got to park the bus, like where the where dumpsters are. And hell, before you get on the bus, you don't know if you got to fight a raccoon or not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we grew up in the sticks. It was fun, though. Yeah, I mean, we, the music scene was heavy right until I got into it, though. So I didn't ever really get a taste of it. What do, you, um, what do you mean by it was heavy? Like a lot of rock like stuff? Like, dude, no, just like Church, Luke Bryan, Aldean, all those people came through there. But it was right before I got into playing music. And so, like, the last concert that I went, that was actually had in that little plaza, which was where everybody came through. Uh, I was like 17. I snuck into a John Langston concert, and I think Jordan Rager was opening. So it was like a while ago. But before that, I didn't even get, it sucks, because everybody talks about how good it was. I never got any. Yeah, because Statesboro's had had its ups and downs in the last. I have friends that played football there. My buddy Cole, yeah. I think he he played football there the year you guys I think beat 
Did you guys beat Florida one year? Yeah, we beat. We had to go to Florida to play them, though. But we still beat them. It yeah. was. I remember yeah, that day like there, to a T. There was a there was a bar that was wild back there, right? That's not there anymore. Uh, I mean, I mean, that, I mean Rudy's dude, probably Rudy's. Yeah, I mean, you got Tav, Rudy's Retrievers, um, the I mean yeah. uh, shenanigans, and they all just kind of like faded out over time. And now no, it's, it's just like Southern Social and Blue Room. And the Blue Room but is But then just... you got your OG bars that still are like, you go there during the day pregame and get you some chicken fingers, and then you kind of stay there until like the nightlife, which is Nats and Dingus McGee's. Yeah. yeah. We have a Zaxby's that stays open until 2. That's, yeah, that's important. It's important to know those those spots that stay open <laughs> yeah. very late, State Sports where the original Zaxby's is from. Really? Yeah. Or, that uh, one right there on, on campus. Yeah. No right shit. across from Dingus McGee's. It's like a mile from the Blue Room. Yeah, it was like a college, ter- it was a college project, and then they, like, it just blew up for them in Statesboro, and so they, it is what it is now. No shit, man. Well, I love going to Statesboro, and you guys, have, to see where things have gone for for you, and by extension, you, you, you guys yeah. have been together doing this thing. Now, when did it... When did you, Dylan, reach out and be like, yo, Screech, let's do this, let's do this music <laughs> thing? Or were you always just kind of right by his side as he was getting involved in music? Oh, What's dude, the story of you two say, coming I up? Remember the, I remember the first day we met, I mean, all the way up until, you know. Dude, like, I got to <laughs> tell him, so check this out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, so <laughs> I know there's this a story. Is so my grandma had a townhouse, which is like, for those of you that don't know, it's like one house connected to another house. There's a wall in the middle. Yeah. My grandma lived on the right. His girlfriend's grandma at the time lived on the left. So I was always over there, and he was always over there, but we never knew each other. And he had this red Ranger, and I had this, like, lifted blue truck. And I vividly remember the first time ever seeing Screech, I pulled up in the driveway, and he pulled in the other driveway. And we just got out and stared at each other, like, who is this guy I think he is? We were trying to big dog both Like, you're 16, like, you know, you're yeah. like, who the hell is this guy I think he is? And we just, like, stared at each other all the way walking in the door like and then I, like whenever i walked inside i was like who's that kid that keeps pulling up in that like, clapped out <laughs> chevy <laughs> and it was like oh that's dylan and he does this little hat brand called hooks and horns or whatever you should get it uh, get one of his hats i was like i don't want one of them damn things <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy yeah, in his truck <laughs> i want him to leave <laughs> yeah and so that's how we first kind of met but then after that um it was at the pond house. Yeah, I would just start playing shows, and Screech would just be there. No, it was Dylan. Like when we officially like shook hands, and was like, "Hey, I'm Screech. Hey, I'm Dylan." Um, he was picking. We was drinking a few beers out on the uh, pond house porch one night, and uh, my buddy Brock. He was like, "Hey, I got a guy that I just met. He's trying to like play the guitar and this that and other." And I was like, "All right, cool. Heck yeah, we'll sit on the front porch and hang out all night." And I was like, this kid's kind of cool. You know, Once I, when I saw the blue truck pull up, I'm like, oh, it's go time. This like, motherfucker. I'm about, I'm about to strangle this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> then he hopped out with a guitar full of stickers. It's like, I was like, all right, you know, I'll give him a shot or whatever. And then we was like best buds from that night on. And then he was like, hey, man, it's Friday night. You know, I'm playing a little acoustic gig at Locos. You know, come hang out. I went, and then I went to another, and then another, and then another. And then I started, like, helping him bring stuff in. And then I started helping plug stuff up. And I would ask him, and then it turned into one night. I forgot where we were. He Dill was like, "You want to be my manager?" And I was like, "Hell, well, the, yes. the funniest thing is, is I before I had even asked him that, I, I think it was Barrel House, maybe, or it was somewhere. Oh. And I was like, "Damn it, like night's done. I gotta go get paid. Like I hate doing this." And he's like, "I already got the check, bud." And I'm like, oh, yeah. Hell, I, for, yeah, I forgot about go. that. Like you got paid for me. Like what? Yeah, and I forgot it, about that." Yeah, and we just kind of, I mean, we got so, we have so much in common, and we're so competitive, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. when it comes to anything, that we can be, like, super competitive, but then we're still, like, best friends after, so that's cool. Yeah. But also, like, we, we've also learned how to take it, like, yeah, we're best friends, but then on the road, we've learned how to take it to, like, that. Business. You know, they say don't work with your best friends, cause, but, like, he could probably shoot me, or I could shoot him, we'd be cool after. Like, yeah. It, it ain't like that. So we've learned how to take it to that professional level, and if there's problems, we talk about it, and it's great. Yeah, because being on the road, you're with a group of guys in a tight space, especially like the situation that you guys are. I've, yeah. I'm in that situ- I'm in that situation right. right now, going around, and the amount of dates that you guys have done this year, the amount of dates you guys did last year, the amount of dates you got coming up, like right. 
it's a lot being on the road and living with someone that you're on. Living yeah. with your fucking tour manager, that's that's a lot. Like, because it's like, I don't know if I could live with someone that I tour I guess I with. never thought of it that way now that you say that. Because they're with like, each other seven days a week. I, mean, oh, Grant, I, know, I, know, I know you got your old lady yeah, and like yeah. you guys are, are out doing your thing too where you're not together 24-7, but it's tough to, like, that dynamic can't, isn't for everybody. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just, we're just, we, just chill, yeah. The, I mean, it's like... I think it comes with a respect thing. Yeah, too. that's true. Like, a lot of people, like, just don't respect, like, certain things about each other. Yeah. You know? It's how, I think that's how it works. We know, but, we know boundaries and buttons. And yeah, so sometimes when, we love pushing them. <laughs> like, <laughs> so when did you get the call from Dylan? Because I know you came up here first. When did you get the oh, call dude, where I it was that, like, you got to get up here? I remember that day vividly. Yeah, I mean, Dallas, uh, my publisher, was looking for somebody to kind of feel like a um what would you say what position would you like an um, admin position kind of okay. front desk kind of get stuff going and i kind of like took over their catalog almost like basically yeah yeah and it was like you, do you think your buddy screech would want to move up here and i was like because i met them at, a, at the georgia vanderbilt game like the whole pa yeah. thing i met I was them like, all do i think screech would want to get paid <laughs> to move here <laughs> yeah yeah and so he's like well tell them to come on and i was like you serious He's like, yeah, so we got him up here, and that's how it's, I mean, that was the, the beginning of it, you know? I remember the here, first but. time Cade called and was like, so I heard you talk to Dill, and he told you the scoop. He was like, so when you thinking about wanting to move up here? I was like, buddy, I'll throw my clothes in a trash bag and come right now. <laughs> yeah. Get on and get on up the <laughs> yeah. road. Yeah, and, so yeah they, and then sadly when COVID hit and everybody got, you know, hard on jobs, but, I mean, we've been picking up – Hell, we've been so busy now. I don't even know if you could. I don't even know if I could have yeah. been, <laughs> yeah. been there. It's, you know? it's a great feeling when you're, especially when you're when you're with a guy from day one. Yeah. Literally day one, like you guys are yeah. are playing the you're playing those acoustic gigs back home in states, bro. To now where you can be his tour manager full time. Yeah. And there's gigs all the time and going all around and opportunities. And yeah. you're about to have, by the time this thing airs, I think that party cut's going to be should be up toward. Where is, is it? I know it's top ten. Top ten as of yesterday. Which is, dude, what the, that's fucking huge. You're getting, the, and you're getting to watch yeah. your buddy do that. Like, watch him do the writing thing, watch yeah. him do the artist thing, and it's... Shit we dreamed about, like, as yeah. kids, yeah. like... for sure. And it's happening. You guys are still young. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. you're, you're, how, how old are you? 25. You're 25, how old 26. are you? 26. Yeah, you got, like, we're all still young in our 20s, yeah. and shit's happening. Like, some guys gotta wait until their 30s, 40s for that kind yeah. of shit to happen, so... No, we're, we're blessed, dude. We're what, for sure what's blessed, this? and we have a... Great group of guys too, like on the road. And yeah, we're, what's we're what's constantly what, what's the so. band like? Who gets the most shit? Because I'm the tour manager. I get the um, most shit from everybody when we're out there. Tour manager and our crew gets the, I don't gets know, the I, most. I, hell. Screech or David? I was about to say either. Do you me know or David? Dave. I know David. David's a character. He's funny, man. Yeah, but David but, can flip it right back around. And he yeah, just David. Like, <laughs> David gives it back. That's why I like Dave. But I mean, we all. I mean, there's like you know, you're on the road. It's like there's obviously sometimes there's like frustrations or sometimes there's like. This and that, but we're we're really good, I think, about about getting it together and. Well, I'm saying like the ball busting, just the ripping. Oh, like dude. it's like a love language when you're on the road to be breaking each other's it's balls. Like, it's probably between Dave. Probably between you and Dave. Yeah, I think me and Dave get the most shit, but we can flip it right back. Oh, yeah, it's dude, just yeah. that you gotta know how to flip dude, it. Right last yeah, week, exactly. like our somebody had said, what, who said something about you in the bus and Screech was driving? I think <laughs> it might have been Jeff. And because, you know, like me and Screech will throw the guitar back. Like, I'll chunk it. We'll just get. Yeah, that tosses is, is yeah. bold. We just get crazy and, and chunk it. And so Jeff was like, yo, are you ready to do your guitar toss for Instagram this week? <laughs> <laughs> I think Screech slammed on brakes so hard everybody. <laughs> I'll turn this bus around. Yeah. yeah. yeah how, yes, they give it back. That's what I like, man. Like, you can't be in our crew and, like, not be good at taking it. Yeah, that's how that's how our crew. Because if too. if you are, then it's just and we've had that before. And it's just, it sucks because yeah. you you just you gotta you gotta be able to take crap, you know. Yeah, and especially in our crew. <laughs> yeah, and you guys have had the the opportunity to to open for a lot of people and go out on full fledged yeah. yeah. tours. The the deal the. the the Dylan Squared tour, yeah. as I, as I was referring to it, with with you guys and, and Dylan Scott. What was it like doing that? With <laughs> that. when you guys are going out, what was, what was night one like? Where did you met Dylan before the tour and all that? Yeah, a couple or? Of times we did some like content. It's funny though because the whole reason I'm convinced that we got on that tour is one night um, Dow was opening for Luke Bryan on the farm tour, yeah. like the pe as the Peach Pickers, him and Rhett and Ben. And I was like, yo, Screech, you want to run up to Ohio? Illinois. Illinois. 
Like Dow gets us backstage passes, and my and Dow was using my. Ba- Sorry, I got a burp so much. Damn. <laughs> Dow was using my band because I wasn't on the road, and he needed a. They needed a band for this like nine date tour. Yeah. So he had all my band pretty much, except my bass player and drummer. And uh, so we get up there, and we met Dylan he, side stage. He was like, "Yo, are you Dylan Marlowe?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Man, I'm I'm a fan," and I'm like, "Holy shit!" Like Dylan nuts. fucking Scott. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then um, <laughs> that was an interesting night. <laughs> what happened that night? <laughs> <laughs> there was an interesting night. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll tell you after. No, you can, we love interesting stories. We can always cut stuff out. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I should save it for later. Okay, okay. Um, but we, we met Dylan, and, and they were super cool. Their whole crew was cool, even then, man. And, and um, he followed me on Instagram like a week later. And then Cade was like, yo, like, super crazy, but you're going on tour with Dylan Scott. I was like, holy crap. I, like, can't help but think that going there and just putting a face to a face was like, and they had been looking for, a, like, an opener for a tour. And uh, I think that was, like, 90% of the reason yeah. we got on that tour, you know. because di- we made that six-hour haul yeah. just to shake babies and kiss hands, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, we love shaking babies. <laughs> and so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I mean Dylan is like the, it, it, like twelve out of ten guy. Yeah, coolest guy ever. Anything we needed that whole time, him or their his whole, whole camp crew. was honestly. Yeah, him and um, Robbie and and everybody. Really. What was like the biggest thing you guys learned from that tour? How to run? I think it was how to. It's, it's a couple of things. It's like how to take in the moment when you're there. For sure. Like how to when you're on stage and you're looking out, you're like. It, it it takes that drive that you have and it just multiplies it because you want that, you know, as well. Even though we get to open it up, it's just like a a thing in your mind. It's like, dang, I want to be this one day in the headline for the this amount of people. And then another thing, I feel like it matured us a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then it, it, it which there turned into a tighter ship. And yeah. I mean, a for lot, sure. a lot of beneficial things came out you of that. Got, you guys ever, you yeah. guys ever go over time? No, no. What they wanted no. us to. Yeah, they were like, "Yo, wow. play more songs." Yeah, we did the like, whole tour cool. without going over. We did like thirty-five. You know, it was a perfect amount. Because I mean, honestly, as, a, as an opener, like in my opinion, if if you don't know who I am and you come to the show, I want to give you like thirty minutes of just up here the whole time. High energy. Yeah, high energy songs, like one low energy song, but also like. Anything over 30, 35, if you're not the headliner and people don't know who you are, they're, like, ready for Dylan Scott. Yeah. So you want to take that 30 minutes and just, like, Make the biggest crush as, as much as you can. But you also, like, want them to be like, dang, I, I kind of want to see that again. If you give them an hour, then they're like, that was too much of this, you know? Yeah, the, and I saw a lot of the video. You guys did a really good job documenting all of that. I was watching my yeah. cast through and like, look yeah, at the boys we, doing this shit. Yeah, we tried um, to. Seeing, um, seeing the crowd sing back some of the originals. Crazy, like, man. Like, all about it. And yes. seeing, um, seeing um, <clears throat> I'll, keep, I'll Keep the Country. Like, yeah, it was, it was nuts. I mean, tons of these places we've never been. And I, you know, I'm sure some of it was people seeing the flyer. And, but there was a lot of people, man, that, that were coming out and just – they were just fans. It was crazy already, and we what, haven't even hit that mark. What was the what was the wild like wildest city that you remember? Oh gosh, the wildest one for me, I don't know. Or surprisingly, even, Huntington, New York was that freaking was oh, that's, 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 the, that's the, Param- long, that, the Paramount. Yeah, that's Long Island. And then that's a good time um, out there. Yeah, that was fun. All the Cali shows were Cali nuts. shows were fun. Utah, I mean not Utah, but uh, where did we go after Montana? Uh, we went to Salt Lake City, Utah, and then we went somewhere in Idaho. Salt so was which one was like the Mormon one where they didn't that drink? That was Salt Lake that's, City. That's, so that one Utah. sucked. Or Utah, yeah. Salt the Lake other City. one that was great, and then Atlanta was awesome. I mean, we had some Atlanta. What would you say? Probably Atlanta, and then uh, there was a show after the tour that wasn't technically on the tour. I remember that. High Point, yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. I mean, oh Ziggy, Ziggy's right. Yeah, something like yeah. that. That's no, that, it that's was that, that, out, that outdoor one. Yep. And dude, we everybody there was singing our stuff. Yeah, it was nuts. I've never been there. It was like the biggest sing back crowd. Yeah, it was. Dude, there was so many good ones, and it's like even the the shows that we thought were bad weren't even bad. Like on on our part, you know, you see videos and you're like, oh, that's not too bad. But you learn, you know. Yeah. The biggest thing I learned, I think, was like, you get this tour and you're like, oh, sweet, it's 30 dates for sure. But then, like, what about after? 
Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing I taught myself was to just live in the moment and just kind of trust God because, like, there's there's going to be other opportunities after and, and the cold thing comes up. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. crazy. Which, which to me is just the full circle yeah. of Statesboro, Georgia, being Coming Statesboro, around. Georgia. For sure. Just like you used, to, you were talking about helping him carry in his gear and start yep. plugging stuff in. That's exactly what Cole did for yeah. Luke. For and, really? And which, yeah, I mean that's that's like if you watch that. Um, I learned that watching that uh, that documentary oh, that, that they did on one. Luke, where it was where they were talking about Cole was just this this kid that was going to school at Southern that was at yeah. all all the shows at Dingus or wherever where, where Luke was playing and was just no ended shit. up hanging out. Have you not seen that? Uh-uh. And he just ended up What's hanging. What's it on? It's on. Like IMB or something? It was on, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. You can gotcha, find it. Gotcha, it's on there. Gotcha. But like they were talking about and they show all these old videos of like a, a curly haired Cole Swindell just yeah. having beers in the, va- in, in the van after the shows and then they just started bringing him out to sell merch and then one day he was like I'm Brighton and then Bing, yeah. bang, boom, you know? It's just, you Georgia guys do such Heck a good yeah. job of picking each other up. So what was sure. that? So how'd you find out about the cold thing? Did he did he call you? Is that something that no, came dude, to that was, or? Yeah. Dude, I, um, so my agent, Kevin Meads, had called me, and uh, he was like, yo, well, we had we had, had one lunch, and he was like, and we, I was like, he's like, I enjoyed that, and uh, let's have, let's just do a, a lunch a month or something. So I went to this lunch, and uh, it was right after I got off the road, and I came in. We sat down at this place, and uh, he was like, man, I, I'm sorry, but, like, this fall is going to kind of suck. It's going to be pretty light. And I was like, damn. Like, we've been busting our ass. Like, how's it going to be light? Yeah. Like, we we just got off tour. We got to have something. There, there's no way. He's like, man, we tried. Like, they just – we just can't get you any shows. And I'm like, do I suck? <laughs> <You know? laughs> is something not working? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what am I missing? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Cole walks in to the restaurant with his girlfriend. And I'm like, well, that's odd. That's Cole Swindell, you know. And he's like, yo, Cole, come sit over here. And he's like, yo, do you care if I sit down here? And I was like, no. And he sits down where Screech is. And he's like, what you got going on in the fall? I'm like, not nah, shit. <laughs> no, apparently nothing. <laughs> apparently we aren't doing anything. <laughs> and he was like, well, why don't you just come on tour with us? And I was like, yeah, that'd be. And I was like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, it was cool. It, it was funny though because he was like, "Man, I've been a fan of like I'll keep the country." My girl loves all about it. Um, and he was like, "I just kept seeing you pop up, you know, whether it's TikTok or Instagram, and like I kept having this like pool." And then he said the final thing was he was in Sacramento, I think, where we had just played with Dylan, and there was this kid there at this private show with the Dylan Marlowe shirt on that I'd signed. He was like, dude, I just could not get away from, like, your name. He's like, so let's just go on tour together. I was like, hell <laughs> That's yeah. That's fucking awesome. Dude, he, he is honestly the, one of the coolest guys, too. Just I've been blessed. Like, we were like, I don't know if another tour will ever beat the Dylan Scott tour. But it's like, cool sure. as Cole and them are, dude, I feel like it's going to be pretty damn close. Yeah, and, and it's bigger bigger rooms. It's definitely bigger rooms, yeah. It's just like, I, I'm, I know a couple of Cole's guys, like Joel and them. They're all super cool. Like, just... I don't know. Everybody's been so cool to, to us so far. Nobody's really been dicks other than the freaking production manager at Saddlebags. Yeah. If he watches this podcast, I do not like him. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even care. What happened? Dude. Or that parking ticket guy. You got a oh. park, you got a, y'all got a parking ticket? Okay, so. Oh, that's so the, funny. In the, with the white in the short bus, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, no. in the post, first of all, <laughs> this guy was an ass to screech when he was advancing. And I was like, all right, well, you know, maybe. Not that I doubt it's Screech. I was just like, all right, well, Screech says you was an ass. You're dramatic sometimes. That's fair. You're, uh, he's overly dramatic sometimes. I'm not overly dramatic. I'm just dramatic sometimes. That must sometimes. be the tour manager thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, guilty. Guilty. And so, um, you know. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to call. Screech was asleep, and we got there at four. And I was like, going to call this guy named Brad. I don't know his last name. And uh, so I call him. I'm like, hey, man, Dylan Marlowe here. He's like, hey. I was like, just check in that sound check's still at five because we needed to run a guitar center. But if it was still at five, then we weren't going to do it. Yeah. I was like, just making sure we're good for five. He's like, five o'clock. I was like, all right, cool. My bad. You know, just making sure. And he's like, five o'clock, dude. I was like, we'll be there. And we had had Chambers, Tyler Chambers with us. Yeah. And evidently, Saddlebags doesn't allow acoustic openers, which is bull. Uh, you know, that is. It's a dance hall. And so. 
I was yeah. like, all right, well, who do I, I need to talk to about Chambers opening? Because he's been with us all weekend. He's my boy. Like, he's great. I he's, want him he, to open. He's opening the show. Yeah. yeah and and it's people. part of our show. And uh, he was like, Laura. And I was like, all right, sweet. Can you just give me Laura's number? I don't My TM's asleep. I'm just trying to get some info. He's like, no, I can't give you Laura's number. I'm not giving out any personal information. That's not my job. <laughs> and the general like, manager of the bar. No, 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 no. No, the general manager, Brad, the owner... There's two Brads. The owner Brad is great, but the production manager Brad is an asshole. A tale of two Brads. And so, um, and Laura was great too. And and but the production manager dude, I don't even like. I don't even care if he watches this. This is how much of an asshole he was. But um, I was like, I kind of laughed a little bit, not like Adam, but kind of like, this is ridiculous. You can't give me your phone number. Like I'm playing there. Yeah. Like I'm gonna make you money tonight. I need you to give me her contact. So I was like, ha, all right, whatever, man. Like He was like, there's nothing funny about this shit. The only thing funny about this is that your agent didn't give you the right info. And I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> like, my agent gave me all the information I need. Like, Laura wasn't on there. Yeah. Um, there there's always someone you have to talk to that isn't on the, the, the show advance. For and, sure. On the advancement and sheet. that's just part sure. of it. And, yeah. that, and Screech had her number, but I didn't want to wake him up. He had drove all night. Yeah. And so that's a good artist right there. Not letting the letting the yeah. TM get yeah, some I, sleep I after driving. I grabbed his MacBook. I don't mind doing that at all, at all. And so, and he was like, "The only thing funny about this is that yada yada yada." My whole band heard it. And it was on speakerphone. I was like, "Well, this is not going to be good." Start to a great night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily, he wasn't our sound guy. Yeah. How How'd the show go though? It went great. Oh, it was it was a great show. I can imagine um, Savannah showing out for you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. It definitely turned because before when they're playing music in the house and stuff like that, they're everybody's line dancing because that's just what kind of bar it is. Yeah. But you know, once like the lights went down and like our intro started playing, it was like three quarters of the bar stopped dancing and kind of like pushed to the front of the stage, and there was still like a little bit in the back that was still wanting to dance. But like majority of the bar like pushed up. For yeah, the show. we've we've yeah. run into that before, especially we go out to Texas like every couple months. Yeah, and it's <clears> it's <throat> odd like. Our guys get weird about playing some rooms in in Texas, Oklahoma, right. those areas, because it's like you're used to the crowd being up front, like it being more like a rock show, like the Blue yeah, Room yeah, or right. like literally any other show in what we do. But you go to some of these other places and they just dance in circles, which I mean is a sign of respect, I guess. If they're not dancing, it means yeah. they don't like your music. But <laughs> true, which, true. which which I which and like you you run across all kinds of different places. The dance hall places yeah. are interesting. And then you guys you said you did Saint Saint Simon's Saint Island. Yeah we did Ziggy there's I guess it's a different Ziggy. Ziggy Mah- Mah- Mahoney's or Mahoney's, something. Mahoney's, yeah. That was our first like headline and ticketed show and I think we did like at the end of the night we did like which there was, uh, I think, four or 500 people, but we did about 200 pre-sale, which was cool. Dude, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Hell so yeah. it was more than... You, that was your first ticketed, like, headlining yeah. show? Yeah. yeah. You're probably so excited was... to do more of those after oh, all these opening yeah. slots. Yeah. And that's going to make your it's life crazy, a lot though, easier, too. Yeah. Even though there was only 200 people in there that knew our stuff, it was, like, cra- the energy was unmatched. Yeah. Like, I... I went and jumped on a table, I think. Yeah, it was like a red dirt road. <laughs> he got into the top back. He's like, I might have do some crazy shit. And I'm, I'm sitting here holding his, I'm holding his guitar ready to do the guitar swap on the next song. Yeah. And he just comes running by me on side stage. I'm just like, what the fuck is he about to do now? <laughs> and like, I turned, like, I turned, I, I, I like set his guitar down, like, to see what he's about to do to make sure he's good. Make sure I don't have to scissor kick someone. And so I turn around finally and I see him. His joker's up on top of like a five foot table and he's just like screaming red dirt road at the top of his lungs. I'm like, I love it. Dude, I, like, I, it's a different animal for sure. Yeah. Whenever it's me on stage versus me right now. Yeah. It's oh, a different yeah. animal. I've, 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 seen it, I've seen it before. Like, because <laughs> um, when I first met you, you were like, I was like, okay, this is, this is Lee's buddy. He's a quiet, quiet yeah, yeah. dude, writes some songs. Had you play the round like day one, like one of our, you were one of the first guys yeah. that played our writers round, which thank you for that. And it's cool to see it, you growing yeah. as growing as we're growing with the podcast and the round. But there is something, there's, there's a lot of guys and girls that when they're on stage or when they're in show mode that are just, it's a different, yeah. different animal. Speaking yeah. of like starting off like in the round podcast, podcast or whatever, I remember listening to the first podcast you had deal on like what three years ago at least. Oh, that, was, that, was, that was BC. Was still, that was before COVID. Yeah, BC. I was still living. <laughs> <laughs> I was still living in Georgia, and like obviously, I, he was like, "You got to listen to this." Like you get thrown up in it, 
And so I listened to it or whatever. And like, as y'all are talking or whatever, talking about me, how I still lived in Georgia, but still trying to do the TM thing. Uh, he was like, you told a couple stories of Matt, and it was, he was like, Screech. He was like, I love that name. I can't wait to meet that kid. Like, <laughs> yeah, here, now, here we are now. And now like, we're buddies. Yeah. yeah. Which, when did that name, when did you be, when did you go from Tyler to Screech? Oh, God. I was in the six. I was in the sixth grade, I believe I was. I was, so I used to shoot, um, like, shotgun for, like, my county um, back in Georgia. That's the most redneck thing you probably heard on this podcast. I've, I mean, it's <laughs> it's pretty, I mean, I've, we've had quite a few guests that have <laughs> yeah. shot shotgun or rifle yeah. for their county or their school yeah, or something. Their school. <laughs> I was that kid. I was that kid. But anyway, we were at practice one day uh, trying to, like, nationals was coming up, so it was like, Everybody's taking it serious. We're shooting literally cases of rounds a day. Like back when I'm back when ammo was, was yeah, not the price that right. it is now. Well, I could buy a box of shells for five dollars. <laughs> but be so cheap, dude. But uh, anyway, this dude was watching us practice, and it was my turn to shoot. And he was like, "You know who you look like?" And like we all like stopped, turned around, and looked. And he was like, "Who's he talking about?" And he like pointed at me. And he was like, "You look like Screech off Saved by the Bell." <laughs> and like everybody paused for a minute. I guess they had to like put a picture in their mind and then like look at me and like we almost had to quit practice because everybody could not keep their posure and so that was just one of them <laughs> things where it just stuck like glue. I couldn't get away from it. Like it's on my class ring. It was on my shooting pouch. Like it, it was on everything. So much so that when you guys met, you introduced yourself. Yeah, as, I'm screech. Oh, yeah. That's that's. I Hell, mean, half the people don't even know what your real name nuh-uh, is. Nuh-uh, they don't. It's like my little brother calls me Screech. It's just like... <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary from Muscadine called him Skeeter one time. Yeah, no, he, Gary could not get my name right. It was Skeeter for like the first year I lived here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Gary, Screech, like, come Bass on. Skeeter. <laughs> I mean, I ain't a bass boat. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's funny, man. Um, for you guys being on the road too, what are some? Uh, you guys, I'm sure have encountered Bucky's. I'm sure you've been all oh, kinds yeah. of different spots. Talk about the bus real quick, because you're the post bus, the post bus, Betty White, or is, the poor bus, or the poor bus, poor bus. I call mean, it. I, you got to So I'm guessing was that you that found that? Was that you that found so that? Or? So yeah, my stepdad is in the military, and there's this thing down on down in Georgia, uh, Hunter Army Airfield. They call it the Lemon Lot. It's where you, like, if you're getting shipped off or you're getting moved to another base and it's like you got 30 days to get the heck out and get to the other base, you got to do something with your boat, camper, truck. Oh, so something. it's just like an auction where. Yeah, and like you get, you find some hellacious deals. Yeah. And so he was riding by the lemon lot one day and was like, hmm, that was a little bus. And it was like, he whipped in and looked at it. And from the outside, he said it looked good. It had a Duramax on the side. It was like, well, we know it's a good truck. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, then we found out it only had twenty eight thousand miles. Yeah, wow. Uh, like, so it on, the the, its year. whole life, it lived on camp or on base, driving kids back and forth. So it never got over thirty five mile an hour, and never was abused. The only thing it hit was a speed bump, and that was. We've hit a couple things. No oh, god. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, whew, yeah. yeah, and then the guy was asking like thirty grand, and I was like, "Yo, I can give you twenty. He was like, take it. I thought it was like 26. It was like 24, I think. 26, 24, something. It was something. Like it was, it was way low. It was way lower. Yeah. No argument, nothing. He I mean, was like, LBZ yeah, Duramax. How does like, it do pulling trailer? Like, what does it max out at? Like, it ain't even back there. Well, when we went out west and we was going through Wyoming, Wyoming or Montana or one of them, and the speed limit went up to 80 mile an hour. We were cruising. I mean, I was. There were some points I was hitting about eighty six in that thing. Oh wow! And I, like we were skint back. So it moves faster than a than a than a passenger van pulling a trailer. Oh, oh dude. yeah, yeah, it's way more durable yeah. too. Like especially the Sprinter vans. If you get stuck in wherever Wyoming, if you're, you're not going to find out. a Mercedes part. No. But dude, we have gone from. I mean, we started South Carolina. All the way to California. Boston, Massachusetts, to the top, like right yeah. below Canada, all the way to the bottom of California. And the only thing I've changed is tires, a fuel filter, and the oil. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Not bad at all. And you guys got bunks on that thing, I'm assuming? We got too? six bunks and two couches and a flat screen TV. Right, so, what, which, <laughs> what, which bunks do you guys ride in? So, are you a top? I, I was the one that built the bunks the originally. Okay. So, I put three on one side and two on the other. Mine and Dill's was on. The left-hand side of the bus, the band was on the other side. Well, we just got a new content guy, Powers, and so he was sleeping on one of the couches up front, and it just, 
you know, when you're riding down the interstate and still, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't or, comfortable. Or, or, so or if you're wanting to sleep and the guys are wanting to hang, like it just yeah. makes it easier to yeah. have a bunk. Like, there's it, walls in it and everything. And it's, it's like it's one dope. thing too if you're just on the road for like a weekend. But he was, I mean, he's been. <laughs> he came out the last Dylan Scott run, and he hasn't not come out since. Yeah. Like he quit his job in Georgia. Yeah, he's moving I was like, up yo, here. let's like, go. <laughs> and so uh, we built him a bunk, uh, like last week, probably, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, it's a little bumpy. <laughs> what's what's in the Dylan Marlowe bus stock? What do you guys stock the bus with? Because do you guys have a refrigerator right. on there? <laughs> no, we don't have a fridge. We have a cooler. You have a cooler. I know All exactly right. where this so is going. <laughs> we have about 10 bottles of Jim Beam. <laughs> we get Maker's one, Mark. Maker's Mark. We get one every night. You guys love, oh, so that's on your rider. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, I just added a coffee machine. And so, like, like a ground bean coffee <laughs> machine? No, like, like, a Keurig, Keurig. Keurig. like a one cup Keurig. Okay. And so you put the water in and it gives you. But yeah. we've made it a point. <laughs> we've made it a this point. This is a Dave thing, by the way. We've made it a point player. now where you can't get back in the bus if you go into a gas station without creamer from the thing. So now it'll be a competition to see who can bring the most. We probably have 100 coffee creamers <laughs> in, in, in the bottom bin. drawer. Now, yeah, we have that. Um, what do you guys snack on? We don't have the best snacks. Well, we did until we, did. we built Powers Bunks. And like now, the first start of the tour, we had like a buffet uh, of snacks up yeah. under like mine and Dylan's like, bunk. Like what? What do we? What do we snack on? Like Oreos? Like, like beef we, jerky? Oh, chips. peanut M and M's were my favorite. That's I, mine I, too. I bought the massive jug. I, I, of them. I buy the big one. I sit up yeah. in the driver's seat. Yeah. I'm doing that, ripping Marlboro Lights and eating peanut M and M's. Well, Screech has his own cabinet that nobody really knew yeah. about for like so that, halfway so through the tour. Does he have a lock on it? No, no. you got to put a lock on. And so it's like above his seat, and when you open it, there's like a million gummies in there. Watermelon Red Bulls, just everything. But I'm about to buy. Like a mini Blackstone grill, and I'm gonna start cooking on the road too. That's what our guys recently started doing. Yeah. How do y'all now. like that, dude? It's it's the best thing ever. We were at uh, what was that? Uh, Mike Ryan show. Yeah, and uh, you, you we had a, you, a little char little charcoal grill. Yeah, like we paid twenty bucks for it, and quickly decided that wasn't the move. So we were yeah. like, <laughs> they gave us a. Uh, for that particular day, I can't say the amount, but they gave us more than our normal buyout. Yeah, yeah. So we took that money and went and bought Yo, a pro- propane grill. Yeah, Hell see, yeah. that's the thing. Like, there's so many nights where we'll, I mean, we sleep in it. And, yeah. and so, like, which there's a, the best thing about sleeping in that thing is if you have a hotel and it's like you got to make it to the next town by two to get any sleep, then you got to be out by 11. Like, we can drive. If Screech wants to drive. I mean, we all pretty much drive. Screech, I'd say you drive like seventy percent. Yeah, probably. And we probably split good, good TM numbers. You get yeah. your rent. You get we your. Split you get your numbers. Sometimes oh, yeah. more than seventy, but yeah. on average, probably seventy. Me and John, our new bass player, drive. Jeff drives when he needs to, and we don't allow David to drive. No, we we don't let Trey Bonner drive. Yeah. for us. So yeah, we don't allow Medlin <laughs> to drive. Um, one time we were coming back from Atlanta, at, through Chattanooga, and I've never prayed so much in my life. <laughs> I, I mean, we were that the, night. the tachometer was maxed Bounce, out, bouncing off, and then the we're room. going downhill. Oh no! Through, through and those I, I yeah, like look out of my book. bunk. I'm like, "Yo, Dave, we good?" And he's like driving like this. He's like, "Yeah, like we're great. Like we're running really good." I'm like, "Dave, look at the road, bro." And, <laughs> he didn't. Uh, he didn't know what a break was that no. night. And so um, we get by with that. And, and when we go out west, we'll let him drive. We have the first the first coastal Wendell dates are Texas. So we'll, you, you've done you did Texas. I've never been never to Texas. Never, we're in Texas. I've never they? even been to. We Texas. got some Fort Worth shows. Oh, like Billy yeah. Bob's. Billy Bob's. Uh, you guys are doing Billy Bob's. Yeah. Like, the, fuck the yeah, Green dude. Hall or Green Hall. Green Hall. Yeah, yeah, dude. Those are some of my. So I did those rooms with Gary and Charlie back in the day. Okay, those yeah. are some of my favorite rooms in the country. What's really good about Billy Bob's? They give you a discount on the store, so you get all this cool Billy Bob's merch. Oh, oh really? They yeah. give you meal tickets, and it's one of those places you'll see when you when you park the bus back there. You'll park. The, you'll pull the bus in, and then it's just all cattle and like cattle rings. It's like literally no like a shit. stockyard. So when you're eating ribs, you're eating brisket, you know that it's literally coming from the livestock that they have on site. Oh, it is some of the best barbecue, dude. I can't wait. That you will have, and yeah, I think it was. I forget if it was Boudreaux or Lee or somebody snuck snuck me an extra meal ticket, and it was <laughs> I, those two meals were were excellent. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you'll you'll like Billy Bob's. Texas is fun, man. It's just. It's a different kind of scene, but if you're going out there with Cole, they're going to be yeah, about yeah. that. You know, it's different right. when you go out there and headline because it's the Nashville, Texas. It's a little different. Yeah. You know, you have so many different styles of music out there. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's been on my bucket list for a while, and I know we're playing the Ryman too. Yeah, dude. Which, which congrats like, on that. I, I saw, can't wait. To I play saw. That. I saw you reposted it. Some girl put up going to see Dylan Marlowe yeah. at the Ryman, which that's got to make you feel good that it's that there's people that your fans are that into it where they're like they're buying tickets to go see. And, and you're, that's the, one of the Cole shows, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So they're buying tickets to a to a Cole Swindell show, but they're like, we're going to see Dylan Marlowe. Yeah, yeah that, that against that Cole is, and no, Ashley in that sure. whole tour. They're yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thousand percent. I'm sure that I'm sure Ashley has fans that are. Just oh like, yeah. Like yeah. screw Dylan, screw Cole. We're coming to see you. Like I think everybody yeah. has those. But yeah, it is really cool to have those few that are like, hey, we're just coming to see you. Regard. I mean, you know, it's it's sick. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. Dude. I'm blessed. Like, I don't know, dude. It's crazy. Been a, it's been a wild ride for the last couple of years. Yeah. I remember when you were, when you when you moved up here. Was it was it, were you really trying to do the artist thing early on, or were you trying to do more the yeah. writing and get your reps, or what was kind of that um, process moving up here? Because I know you had songs out, and obviously we've had we've had Noah Hicks on this show too, and talking about yeah, yeah. back in the day when you guys went with Raised on the Radio yeah. and and all of that stuff. Yeah. But now to see you doing the the artist thing in full force, because you've been putting out songs for a while. Yeah, you were putting I mean, out shit before you moved here, right? Yeah. I've always been, I'm more of a perfectionist when it comes, so I, I haven't put out as many as I should have, probably. I've had tons of songs mastered that I just haven't put out, like that Love You Anymore song. Yep. Um, I should have put that out at the time, but it's like, now I have way better songs. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I moved to town, I wanted to, I moved here to be an artist. Um, I never wanted to be a songwriter, so it pissed me off when people were like, here's, here's Dylan Marley, he's a great songwriter. I'm like, screw that, dude, like. That's not why I moved here. And and I've always said, too, if I had to, if somebody was like, you can't um, be an artist, you can't be an artist, but you can stay here and write songs, I would be out. You'd go back to Georgia yeah. and just... Do something. Work and, for my dad or do something. But, yeah, an artist is what I want to do. I don't want to be no just one a is songwriter. A songwriter. But, but getting, yeah, and but, I, I love writing songs. Yeah, and writing songs that you get to put out or that you're... Your friends at one point were put like have put out like because yeah. now obviously the that that John party cut with you and Joe changes oh, yeah. changes a lot. I'm sure you've already started to see some of the ripples of that. For sure, like I love it. You know, it's it's helped that's helped my career getting to play that song on the road. And, yeah, still just I love songwriting. I love writing songs for me, and I love I've never gone into a room though and been like I'm gonna write for so and so. It's always for me. And if it just works better for somebody, it's like the John Party song. Yeah. Then it's cool. But I've never gone in and gone, well, hey, it says Jake Owen's looking for a song. Let me write for Jake Owen. Yeah. Because it's like. And there's guys and girls that are great at doing that and love doing that. And that's that's what they're here to do. Dude, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just for me, it's like a personal goal. Like, I don't want to be just a songwriter. Yeah. Like, if I'm not out there playing and, like, trying to build a fan base and, and hearing people sing back to me, it's not worth it. Yeah. That's just me, though. Yeah, no. And there's nothing absolutely. wrong with anything else. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so you so you got Texas coming up. Yeah. Where do you said any other spots that you haven't been to that you guys are – that you have kind of circled on we the calendar? We covered so many damn states on that Dylan Scott yeah. tour. It's like we got to see so many things. It's just like bucket list checkoffs that – like yeah. we got to see more in two and a half months than most will ever see in their lives. It's like sure. I got to see my, or we got to see Mount Rush. Mount Rushmore is cool, dude. Yeah, Mount it was so dope. cool. We went out to San Diego, and one of our good buddies lives out there now, and that we grew up with back in Georgia. And we got to fly in his plane, and he actually let me. I remember he let me drive that. it or <laughs> I, fly it. Were you it. were you having some uh, anxiety with Screech driving <laughs> dude, that plane? I was having yeah. anxiety. He like he was like grab the handles. I was like why? He was like just grab them. So I like grabbed him or whatever, and he was like, he flipped something, and he was like, all right, you're on your own. I said, huh? He was like, plane's in your hands. I said, that's when I started like shake, sweating and shit. And it was Top like, gun in it real quick. <laughs> and then I figured out how sensitive them things were. And yeah. then I kind of like looked back at Dylan, and Dylan was over recording. He was yeah. like, we're, we're going to die. There's going to be a video of it. Yeah. Was San Diego <laughs> yeah. a House of Blues show, or yeah. was that uh, House was of Blues? Yeah. Because yeah. I was just, I've been out there for Moonshine Beach and Moonshine yeah. Flats. What? California likes their country music. And they that do. really, I that really surprised me. They don't get it as much. That's yeah. how I, that's the same thing with me as a New Yorker. We used to, I I used to go to maybe like 50 to 60 shows a year. I'd have to drive for them, yeah. but I'd go to them. Like the upstate, Damn, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, and the New York, I mean, that was when I was doing radio and stuff, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't paying all them. I mean, I was for a lot yeah. of them, but I, mean, I was getting to go on a lot of those radio tour shows too, mm-hmm. which were a lot of fun. What would you guys think of New York? Did you have to drive through the city in the bus? Dude, 
No, we drove no, around it. No, we did. It? So I missed. Uh, I think it's Manhattan is when you when you're driving out of the city and you in like the Statue of Liberty's to your right. Is that Manhattan? That's 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 Manhattan's to the right. That's coming over from Jersey. So the Statue of Liberty, as much as I hate to say it as a New Yorker, is technically in New Jersey okay. waters. But yeah, so that's I ninety five and then you got like the city on the right and the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. So whatever was to the right, like the big bay and I was the turnpike, like, yeah. It was just so chaotic. But I missed that morning traffic by like fifteen minutes. Oh, like, that, that I was saves com- you like two hours. Hours. Dude, I like I could tell like as I was coming up on that big airport to the right or whatever at, at yeah. getting out of the Lagu- city. LaGuardia, yeah. yeah, I, I was I noticed traffic getting heavier and heavier and, and I like looked behind me it was just like sh- nothing but stop car. Jeff, like, you have fun with all those tolls? Oh. Oh, dude, <laughs> I, I one remember time, <laughs> one time I was like half asleep. Whatever I try to like stay on the couch if somebody's driving late. And Screech is like, uh, we pulled up and I'd overheard and the lady was like, um, it was like it was like oh, she uh, goes, she 58 was like, or it was like 80 right something oh yeah it might it's have like been. 85 screech is like like cents so i was like i got your dollar bill right here <laughs> she <laughs> was like no uh dollars i was <laughs> screech, I like, turned around and yeah. i was like i looked at dylan i was so like what did she just say she just say <laughs> she said 85 dollars yeah it all, I like was shaking, and handed her a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> yeah, we like ripped out the open merch up, money. Open, open up the merch box. That's what I used to do. Yeah, no, Chuck, I, me and Lee I used kept to pull merch, that merch money box right up front. You yeah. have to. Yeah, that's why we have those things. Like you see them in Florida, those sun passes. Or yep. whatever. we have Easy Pass or Peach yep. Pass in Georgia. Right. We have um, we have Easy Pass, and that thing it just loads up fifty bucks every time you hit every time you go Whew, through. Which man. with cars it's cheaper, but when you're driving a bus and a trailer, it all them axles. gets expensive. Did you guys get good pizza when you were up there? We stopped at yeah. two pizza places and got pizza, but I think the best pizza we had on the road wasn't even from New. No offense, wasn't even from New York. Well, it was it was up north, but it wasn't. Was it like Boston or like uh, Connecticut? Because Connecticut's got been. good shit I, I too. I remember Huntington. Like when we played the Paramount, I had pizza at some point then, and it was good. But we were with Dylan Scott somewhere, and they was like, "This place is like known for its pizza." Also, Dylan Scott threw a lot of the pizza into the green room. Like slice by slice. Oh yeah, like my printer. Like, but while we would be like breaking down and stuff, they'd be in our green room destroying it. Like there was times. Oh, they I, would fuck with you. I would, like, I would get ready to go put my printer up and shit, and there'd be like pizza on it. In where the paper goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fucker. <laughs> yeah, the pranks on that tour were wild. Did you guys get them with any? The end of tour prank oh, yeah. was. I think we got them better than they got us. I don't know. But they, I think they just screwed you while you're on stage. <laughs> but we had fun with them while they were playing. Well, the last show of the tour was like the least energy. From the crowd, because it was a casino. Where was it? New York. Oh, <laughs> uh, New York. Right, was it? Yeah, Waterloo, well, New York. Oh, upstate. Yeah, 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 upstate. And dude, like, and I didn't know this, but evidently they give a lot of tickets to, like, people just to get them in the casino. So yeah. I'm sure some of that was that, which he, I think he almost sold it out, too. Yeah. Or maybe he did. I don't remember. But um, the crowd was not too entertained, like, by us or, or whatever. It was really weird. So to make it worse, it's the last night of the tour. I mean, we were hyped up. I mean, yeah. We had a lot of energy. And uh, so there's a video of us right before we go on stage, and they had tapped into our ear rack with a air horn unit. Like, all, so, like an app on the phone. <laughs> and so I was about to go out, and our intro is going. We have a really cool intro, and it you just hear, like, bah, bah, bah. And I looked at Screech, and Screech looks at me, and he's like, what was that? I was like... No, and I quote, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't know, bud. He was like, oh, God. And we go on stage, and there's air horns just randomly during our set. I look over, and Derek Klein and Jason was... Well, Derek is their drummer, and Jason's their monitor guy or whatever. And they're just over there, like, and then the whole entire crew, like Dylan Scott and everybody's behind them, and they're just giggling like little school kids. And he was like, and they're like, meh, meh, meh. I mean, like, all about it. Yeah. Know, the last song is, I'm all about it. It's like this cool thing, and then it's like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> like through the whole entire house. And like just, the fans are like, what are these dudes doing? Like, oh, so it's, oh, oh, so it's going over the oh, house. No, oh, no, it's in everywhere. the house. People oh, like the fan, fans are like, what the? What is this? Like, this? Remix. <laughs> and then um, also, uh, their merch guy, Jason. Um, <laughs> I still got we didn't have a that. bass player on that tour. We had bass in the tracks. 
And Jason came out with an unplugged bass. He's like this ripped guy, and he's just running around. It's the their stage, merch guy. Just dying. <laughs> it's hilarious, dude. And then, um, I, I like, a, there was some point in the set, oh, somebody like you. And I would kind of sit down wherever I'm at on the stage and like sing to the crowd right on the front row. And Dylan came up with all black with holes punched in water bottles and just squirted them all in my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I couldn't catch this was all the la- This was all the last, yeah, show. The last show. I mean, they have 30 minutes. So, so, they did all this. So what would you guys do back to them? So we got <laughs> we went and bought lawn chairs. We should have got them, which I guess the Looking first back prank. back on it now. Mm. The first prank, we got lawn chairs and floats and a cooler of beer. And during Beer Buddies, we all walked on stage. And we just started cracking and started beers and like beer. throwing the pool So it was like less like... harmful. But then towards the end of the night, I mean, it was the last night of the tour, so me and Dave were kind of buzzed. And so we found a whole roll of gaff tape and went, and there was a balcony like 80 feet above them. And me and Dave just started chunking balls of gaff tape. I mean, there was probably 200, I mean, 300 you look rolls out, of gaff tape. If you were in the crowd looking onto the stage, it looks like little black dots are everywhere on the stage. And I mean, we were smoking like rocks with gaff or something. tape. I mean, but the whole tour, we randomly got stuff thrown at us. Coffee well, oh, cups. You, the, what about cups? the bus when we walked out the last night oh, of the show? Oh, and then they drew penises. <laughs> <in> the <night>. <laughs> <laughs> they, put, like, they put like Dave's number on the back, like, call for yeah. a good time. Uh, like, did anybody call him? I don't, I don't think Actually, so. Actually, when get y'all left the Ohio gig, somebody called Dave. Remember the sold-out show? <laughs> yeah. When I went but to there, the it was there was not a single inch of window that was not drawn on. Oh, no. It was like so they took time and effort. Oh yeah, they drew like how like the driver's seat or whatever. Dylan Scott drew me like on the side like I was driving. I had like my mullet like flowing in the wind or something. <laughs> like, we gotta find it was, that picture. I got the picture. That's it was great. Funny so so, Col- so Coast Wendell better look out. Um, we got some tricks up. Our we got some tricks. Depends on how bad they get us throughout the tour. Is how bad the end of the tour prank is. Because I mean, we're getting we're kind of getting smarter with stuff. As yeah, the, well, Dylan's got taught you very yeah, well. You learn you learn from Dude, he's one a of jokester, the best. Man. And plus, I mean, looking back on it now, hell, even Lang- Langston and JD Groover. I mean, they, JD would. If like if we left a suitcase in a room or something oh, like we'd dude. get it back in fifteen trash bags with a whole roll of duct tape over it and stuff like it's just yeah. Like, we've been around pranks basically since we started. Yeah, you were talking about how, like, John Lanks was one of the first shows you remember watching yeah, as a yeah. kid in Statesboro. And J.D., obviously, like, a, a well-known guy as a TM in the community yep. and, and another Georgia guy. Have those guys or, like, just other acts that have been kind of an influence on both of you guys for what you do? For sure. Yeah. Me, like, for sure. J.D. has taught me a very big pro- like portion of what I know as a TM. Like, a lot of it I had to learn on my own. That's most like, of I, it, I kind of yeah. get thrown to the wolves, but, yeah. like, hell, even Robbie, Dylan's TM, like, I've learned from him on that tour, but, like, JD was, like, my start, like, TM. The first TM I ever spoke to, he, he was, like, you know, gave me a great pointers, and throughout our career that we opened up for him, you know, he's, every show I learned something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's important to have people yeah. to learn from because I got I've I've definitely been thrown to the wolves as well and we see all yeah. kinds of wild shit on on tour with Trey yeah. you see and oh, now be, and now being out now being out with Uncle Bob Kid Rock you see all kinds of shit too oh, I, I bet that is seeing wild how, dude. seeing how seeing how that how how all that stuff works and you never see the same thing twice there's always something that that's Kid happened. Rock show like wild like does he act a fool it's a lot of explosions um, <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot of pyro. I'd say there's probably like four or five wardrobe changes um, for the Nashville yeah. show and the Louisville show. We had the dancers, like you had yeah. the poles up on the drum riser. <laughs> dancers. No way. Yeah, for only those two shows, though, most of them it's virtual dancers on the screens, mm-hmm. and it's just the crowds. You never you see all all kinds of stuff. It's right. a, depending on your political leanings, it's a very fun show. Right. You know, you hear and see a lot of shit. He's a, he's a proud proud patriot. Uncle yeah. Bob is. Oh, yeah. um, for but sure. it's a it's a good time now. Some Nashville questions for you. What's your favorite bar in Nashville? That you like going to? You guys aren't Broadway guys anymore, are you? <laughs> I, I don't think you. Was. I don't think you ever will. That, that that got burned out the first three months, and that was only because I worked at Play It Again when the office was on Fifth. Yeah. And so it was like it go was out for two, happy hour. Yeah, it was yeah. two out over two blocks over, and like, what was your Broadway bar? Where would you go? It was, I don't know. I'm because I love the rooftop at Whiskey. Yeah, that's but yeah. I also love the third floor at Aldine's. Third floor at Aldine's is yeah. is very. If tough I were to, to go to Broadway, to match. Dude, I've never even been there. You've never even been to Broadway? No, it's a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, you've never even like been, have you been out and like, part, have you gotten fucked up on Broadway? No. Nah. 
Oh, I have no desire because we, we we got to do. I mean, this guy doesn't. We're we're gonna get you down there, <laughs> dude. You go I with just, Uncle McElwain, he'll what, get what you are going. we doing in thirty minutes? <laughs> I gotta go host the round, but after that, dude, I just, Tuesdays aren't bad down there. Also, if you come from where we come that's from, that's true. It's a lot. Like that's why Midtown is our favorite. It, yeah, you grow up in it. Grow up around. What do you mean you grow up dude, in it? Like just, just like the live music and the shenanigans. Getting hammered every night. I mean, I mean that was all there. I mean, if you weren't. If somebody didn't already make plans like during the week, like, hey, boys, we getting 15, 20 boats and we're going to hit the Geechee River, like, we're going to find, a, weekend, we're going to find a sandbar or, or we're going to ride a four wheeler or something like that. And then if not, then it was, if nobody made plans, it was always known that, like, all right, well, I'm going to see you at the Blue Room Friday night, Saturday night, probably dingus to well, get drunk wh- Sunday. Wildest thing you guys have seen at the Blue Room? <sighs> wildest thing. I mean, other than like, because I'm very familiar. <laughs> like, I've seen thing. I've seen all kinds of wild shit. I've only been there. I think I've been there four or five times, and I've had a great time every Dude, time. I don't even know. To be I honest. mean, it, I mean, it's just a conglomerate of just shit that goes on at Blue Room. It's from girls fighting and guys fighting and homeboy like headbutting the punching bag thing and knocking himself out. Oh, yeah. It's just like people puking. There's so much. I'm gonna that call goes David on. out. The funniest thing I've seen at the Blue Room. <laughs> Our guitar player David was just, I don't know what it is. Like, girls just flock to him. They like him a lot. That's, that's how we are with Sweet Boy. Sweet and Boy so does very well with the ladies. Dave for us. is on the stage. We're, un, we're packing up, and there's these two girls that had guys with them, and they just dipped. There are two guys, and they both walked over and started kissing David on the cheek. And I was like, no shit. Like, he, I don't know. It was crazy. Like, home, like they like, just. Looked at David and left just like that. And yeah. Walked over to David. Like homeboy had two girls. Like like he was a baller or something. Then did he did he get <laughs> him did he get him back at the green room? No, uh, no, he just no, well he doesn't he? no. I thought, he's not he's I not really he like did. that. He's just like he he just, it was just funny. They just left, came to him, and then left. That's it. It was just a peck on the cheek. They yeah, dude. He phone, just, num- phone numbers as they do I'm in blue, sure. as they do in Statesboro. I'm Snapchat. Sure. Snapchat's a big thing at the Blue Room. Dude, can I'm I get sure. your yeah. number? No, but you can have my Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the amount uh, of people on the road that ask for my like, Snapchat is stupid. Like, do you, do you give it out? No. I mean, it is a way to promote stuff, but you, but then you got to watch what you put Dude, on. They don't there. really use Snapchat for promotion. No, nah, I mean, like, when we first started out, it did, but like, I Snapchat our group chat, my mom and that. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's I hate Snapchat. It's not. not I just your, have it for that thing. group chat. That's literally the only reason I have it. And to send pure pictures, entertainment. Pictures yeah. of my dog. Pictures of your dog. Yeah. It's called career ender. I mean, you can imagine what goes on in that thing. <laughs> it's oh. my career starter. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what What's the quote? Go. Uh, Public, any publicity is good or something. No like such that. thing as bad publicity. Yeah, yeah it is. You see, you we see have it. a song called "Dick Down in Dallas," so <laughs> we can do whatever we want. <laughs> oh, sweet. That's boy. fair point. Yeah, yeah, it does does get a little wild. You uh, the TikTok thing? What's that been like for you? Because that's a whole nother. Because you were doing this before, like you were kind of, you. We were all we were all playing kickball together during yeah, yeah. COVID, yeah. and running around and watching guys slide and dive and this, that, and the other thing. And then this TikTok thing kind of really started taking off the middle of that 2020, like the summer of COVID and the, right. and the COVID times, the hard times. Yeah. And it's done some good things for you. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's a cool app. There's a lot that you can benefit from it. It's annoying as hell, though. Like feeling the need to have <clears throat> to post stuff? Yeah, but, it, I mean, it's really self-help. It's beneficial. Um, does it make do you feel pressure when you put a song up there if it does well to put it out no i mean i i'm the kind of guy where if i think a song is good i'm gonna put it out regardless because like for for instance on when i look back i posted that and it had like thirty thousand views and it was it's like i love this song regardless and then i post the same song but just showing somebody in my truck and it gets like three million so it's like in my head like people on tiktok are just Dumb. <laughs> they're just, just scrolling stupid. through their. They're just scrolling through their phones when they're taking a shit or whatever. Yeah, like they're, they're just they're stupid. I mean, I don't know if I should say that or not, but it, it's just I mean, it's the hey, generation yeah. now that is just really pleased by like quick stuff. Yeah, and yeah. and in my opinion, things that just I don't know. Very short so, attention. So span. then it's like, how do you judge a song 
right by 30,000 views or 3 million. And the difference was just showing you the song or giving you a story to see the song. It's like a, the song's still great. Even if yeah. it only got 30,000 views and I never did that, I would have still put the song out. Um, I'm just a strong believer in the song. Songs are, are, you can have everything. You can look good and you can sing good and you can have a great show, but the songs aren't there, dude. It's got to be the songs. Yeah, that's oh, true. That's, that's definitely some truth. Where's your favorite place to eat at in Nashville? Um, Where'd you? Because I know you, you guys are Hermitage guys still, right? Yeah, yeah. Hermitage yeah. guys. Dude, I, you I guys, love... you guys lost Palmas or Cinco? Cinco. Cinco. You guys are, well, you guys like margaritas. Yeah, yeah. Palmas that's, is too expensive. I like Palmas because I'm not a drinker, so I'm like, the food is oh, exponentially yeah. better. Yeah. And I've gotten into it with, with some of my buddies, like like Skinny McKinney and some of those guys, because they love Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, but I'm like, but I'm like, all he does, I mean, like, what they do, they go there to drink the margaritas, and the drink specials are better at Cinco. I just like the salsa better. You like the salsa better? Yeah, that's it. The cheese like, dip's fire, too. Yeah. yeah, I like I I pay the premium for Palmas, you know, yeah, and, and no, plus I live fair. right over there by that Chick Fil A yeah. and all that stuff. Have you guys been? How long have you sat in that Waterburger line for? Uh, well, <laughs> it's been it it's been many nights where I'll pull in like I'm talking about like late at night, and the line is like rat. I'm like fuck that. <laughs> have you sat in the line though? For have you actually done it? I won't do nah. it. I don't like that burger enough to do it. The other night now if there pulled... was an In and Out. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The other night we pulled in. Um, the line was long, so we just walked in and got a burger. And it was like, quick. In like five minutes. Yeah, because Screech... <laughs> I, I was blistered. <laughs> no, no, blistered? no, no, not, no. You were completely sober and making a dumb decision. <sighs> no, I was blistered and still making a dumb decision. <laughs> Where were you guys at? I won't roast them on this podcast. Yeah, Where were you guys at yeah, before it? Don't. Well, nowhere. We were at the house. We were at the house. We were just at the house having a good old time. Just Yeah. yeah. And like, fuck it. Let's go get Waterburger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Because Hermitage is, is the only... Have you lived anywhere besides Hermitage? No. Nah. Like, that's for me. Like, I like being out of town yeah. a little bit. There's a lot yeah. of people that are like, why don't you want to live in... Oh, like, dude, I couldn't do it. Have you seen it. the prices of rent living in, <laughs> living in this motherfucker? I couldn't do it. Dude, so a question I have for you. What do you think, or who do you think, is behind this Hermitage shit page? Have you seen this? Well, there's the Hermitage shit page, and there's the people that go around and put forks on people's lawns. And that's I've fair. Th- I've dealt with the forks on people. Have you ones. figured out who the forks were? I no, have. I it was no Matt idea. McKinney. It was McKinney. Yeah, was it? Yeah, they interrogated him at the bar the other night. So it was, really? and he was like, his "I big did ass the forks." Is going around putting all, yeah. dude, that takes time. He was like, "I did the forks, but I'm not hermited shit." Because the hermited shit is what an Instagram account. Yeah, yeah. I haven't actually heard from it in a while. I want to see if there's any. What's it called? Hermited shit. But it's, it's S Y or S H Y T. Hermited shite. And they've just been going around <laughs> yeah. shite. Hermited and messing sheet. like low key messing with people's stuff, but not enough. Well, they got Brian Fuller, right? Yeah, that... but like a McChicken on the car. That's yeah, it. Like, like that wasn't anything. Like... They painted my front windshield. The last post was from May 29th, and it was just it's just water bottles on Trey Team's car or truck or whatever. <laughs> it's like, like harmless that... stuff, but I think everybody. It's just annoying. No that, one, is, yeah, no one yeah. is safe. This, this was you guys. That was right? my truck. Yeah, that's yeah. Screech's truck, and we were at Nat's house. <laughs> yeah, and everybody thought it was me and Screech and Chambers. We were at Nat's house, and Lee is like the investigator, and he's like well, trying. Well, to of yeah. course, Lee, Lee, Lee was trying to be Lee, like Lee, head Lee, investigator. Lee, like. Lee was a game warden or a sheriff in a oh, past dude. life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just knowing Lee yeah. Bird, we love you, Lee. But, but we yeah. were at Nat's house at a dinner, and Chambers was at a baby shower, and it still happened. And so um, we tried to get our neighbor's ring door footage, but it had just rained. And so the thing was cloudy, and it didn't pick anything oh, up. I don't know who that could be. They haven't fucked with me. If, I, I, I got a bone to pick with me. Well, now, now you done messed up and said something, because whoever it is, they're just going to be like, Matt Burrell. We're going to get <laughs> Well, I'm my roommate, your have you met my roommate, Kepsi? <laughs> uh-uh. So Kepsi, he's from Jersey, and he works for the, um, he used to work for Homeland Security. Now he works for the um, federal courthouse here. So he's one of the few Jersey guys that you'll meet that, that has, he's, he's got some guns. And he's, he's the guy, like, he'll hear a creak in the house. He'll be like, he'll shoot me a text, like, stay in your room. I'll clear it in the house. Like, he'll, <laughs> like, he'll say shit. All right, G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what I'm saying. So if I tell Kepsi, hey, there's some people, like, he'll be ready to go. So I, I challenge Hermitage shite to come out. To and come to your house. Give us, give a, give us if a. If Hermitage shit is listening, Hermitage Matt Burrell has challenged you. And I have too. Which I set a deer camera up in my yard. You set and a deer it, camera up? Just yeah, to... and Screech's truck was on the left side of the driveway. And I had it facing the door. 
to try to get anybody coming up to the door. But Lee uh, came to me like two or three days after that, and he was like, "Deal, put up a, a trail cam by your truck, like in the like right by the driveway." I was like, "Yeah, I seen that." He was like. The dumbass forgot to put batteries in it. <laughs> well, I was my like, Dylan, thinking, you know it don't have batteries. He's like, I'm just trying to scare them. <laughs> yeah, my thing I put in our group chat, because we were convinced it was somebody in our group chat. I was like, yo, just put a deer camera up. So in my head, I'm like, I don't have 12 extra batteries, and I'm not going to go buy them. <laughs> but, just for this. Yeah, but like, here it is. Yeah. Speaking of deer stuff, real quick, um, got to talk about the hunting stuff. So you still have in your um, in your Instagram value, was it BFE Outdoor or yeah. something? So you guys are still doing the the, hack, the hats? Yeah, I, and I the... thought I wore one today, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, we're trying to. It's got it's a lot more work than I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, like a you lot. Know? Like because they they're people want them, like, which blessed for it. But like every time we get them in, it's just like the first order we ever did. It sold out in 24 hours. Yeah. And we did like 70 hats. That's what I had with the Fuck Man Burrell shirt. So yeah. It went really quick. But he's like, where's my fuck? I'm like, it costs money to get that, yeah. guys. And like, time. Yeah. It takes time for them yeah, to come also in. Also that, yeah. too. And then the shipping out. I mean, we spent two days or three days shipping stuff out. I think out. more than that. And it was like working till like 2 a.m., like printing labels. Like, it was... It was a lot because we did handwritten letters in each box. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah for sure. Which By is name how and yeah. everything. We had a process, too. It just with being on the road, I don't know. Plus, we had a crazy vendor. We had, to, we had to find a new vendor. She was nuts. Yeah. She, like, made the hats before I asked her to and then sent them before we even paid her and then was like, you're trying to steal from me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you sent them to us. <laughs> Like, so what? we got to find somebody else. If anybody is watching this and wants to, we, make we might have a hookup for you. Yeah, we can cool. talk to you Big off bet. the mic. Yeah, because um, we need to get BFE bat rolling. Yeah, we could definitely help you guys with that. Um, where are the better deer in Tennessee or Georgia? Tennessee, Tennessee, one hundred percent, dude. One hundred percent. Are they just bigger here? Way bigger. There's bigger. more of them because in Georgia, I, I, a bunch I of will rednecks. Say, I and, think it's harder to hunt deer in Tennessee than it is in Georgia because Georgia you can put corn out legally, but the yeah. the deer just. Are, there's so much land here, and there's so much that these deer in Tennessee have to do more of than in Georgia. Like, Georgia's flat. I mean, the craziest obstacle a Georgia deer has to go through is a swamp. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Plus, like, people down there shoot everything. That everything. I'm talking about, if it's like that, oh, wall mount, baby. <laughs> I'm like, nah. It's impossible to manage them. But up here, dude, there's so many big deer. Yeah, yeah, do, you, for yeah sure. do, you, do you guys try and hunt when you're on the road at all? Yeah, we actually yeah, did. We um best hunt I've ever been yeah, a part of. One of the was... top three for sure. We went to we did Montana, Utah, and where else was it? Uh, Nevada. Uh, Idaho. Idaho. And so we had that, and then we had five days until we had to be in Cali. So we stayed out there, and I did some cold calls on my hunt app and got some. I got this nice lady with like eight hundred acres. And she wonderful. Was, well, it was like now they're like our Wyoming grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> and Anytime we, you're I in the area, you yeah. hit them up. She, I'm like, hey, I'm I'm playing, uh, looking for some turkey spots, and and I had to be in this one zone for the the season to open. And so I call this lady, and and she's like, yeah, y'all come on. We get there at four or five a.m. She's like, come in the house. We got breakfast and coffee and stuff. Like <laughs> we're like, you're very trusting. <laughs> yeah. Never met us before, and and um. Didn't kill anything the first day and the second day. She and kept we saying, hard. God, she was like, Why don't we hard. go check up on the ridge? And we're all at the kitchen table, like, Yeah. And her husband was like, Nah, it's like, there's. And she was like, Let's just go check on the ridge like three times. And we're like, All right, we'll go check the damn ridge. And we checked the ridge and there was like 20 turkeys up there. <laughs> well, there was there was a bunch still on the ground or whatever. They were on the ground, yeah. yeah. We watched them fly into the tree. And so we're like, next well, I, morning. We counted out at least like eight gobblers that were shootable turkeys. Yeah. And so we were like, oh my gosh. But it was on... Another property. On, and they're from California. So you can imagine probably that it would have been a shit storm if yeah, we the other, tried to shoot over yeah, there. Other people's property was from California. Yeah. And But we had five acres that we could stay on. That was it. The top of this plateau across the road. So we got there the next morning and just called them across the road. As soon as they got across the road, I mean, we smoked them. It was, it was like both pull of the trigger, t- it birds great. fold. It was like, then we had like the beautiful Wyoming like sunrise over Yellowstone the Yellowstone shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like antelope yeah. and cows like in the background. It was like, Because you're bringing your birds back. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It was, it was one awesome. of the moments me and Dale sat down on a rock and looked over this, like he was saying, this massive plateau that dropped down. Sure, I have a picture of it somewhere. Yeah, it's on my Instagram, but it, it was like the most beautiful hunt I've ever been a part of. And to to go from where, where you're used to hunting in the yeah, southeast in South to Georgia. just open 
land yeah, like that. It's for sure. It's one of the cool parts about getting to see the country. What's something you would tell your younger self? Like, tell what was something you would tell? Oh, geez, that is yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's crazy, gorgeous. Um, what's something you would tell yourself um, now, being here for a couple years, seeing the, like moving up here and being Dylan's tour manager, but not really doing a whole lot of shows? Like, younger what, self is in like what age? Like try, like high school, trying to think 20, about... Tw 22 years old, you get ready to move up here. 22, 23, 20, whenever it was you got up here. Well, by then, I had already been in the mindset of this is what I want to do, and I'm going to bust my balls to get it done, whatever it takes. But what was some, what's something you wish you knew then that you know now? How... Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> What I was getting myself into, like, <laughs> and that comes with I'm saying that out of love, but like, I didn't realize that I was gonna love what I do so much, but how much, how hard it was gonna be to learn, because I don't give ninety nine percent. Like, I try and give a hundred percent. Everybody makes mistakes on shows. Like, sometimes I shit the bed on a show and I don't do something or whatever. But I think younger me was just so anxious to get to nashville and like be a part of the scene because like music was what i wanted to do and i didn't give a shit what it was but then it turned into more of a love for tm and than anything because i tried I, like i did the play it again thing i loved it but like i wanted to see the country and stuff so something that i would tell my younger self is just like be patient like Stay humble, but be patient. Like your time is coming if you put in the work. Just, just take a take a breath, kid. You'll yeah. be all right. Hell yeah! What about you, Dill? Dude, it's funny because I wrote a song today called "If You Could See You Now." It's like oh, to shit. my younger self. Damn, I oh, like sick. that. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. Um, definitely, like God's time is the best time. If I had to say anything, I mean, like I said earlier, it's it's all it's a lot of like in the moment. You're like, holy crap! But when it's gone, what's gonna happen? Just kind of got to trust him in the process he has, like, for you, because I wouldn't have expected to hop off Dylan and then go hop on with Cole. And then I'm sure there's going to be something after that. So been trying to be less, like, worrying and stressing about stuff and more just, like, putting it in his hands because it's crazy what happens. I mean, just put your head down, too. Like, a lot of things – I feel like a lot of people compare themselves, especially at this point and with all the stuff going on. And so once I've stopped, like, comparing myself to other people and – putting out the music I want to put out and writing the music I want to write. It's just been like a freaking a runway. Yeah, you got to put the blinders on and yeah. focus on being it's the like best. A, it's a cliche thing, but it's a real thing when you stop worrying about um, what everybody else is doing. Yeah, be the best Dylan Marlowe that you can fucking be. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do like, you. Like wake up and try to beat myself and not yeah. try to beat anybody else. Absolutely. Who's got the better golf game between you two? Well, it started out me because <laughs> I, I was I, okay. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> He's so I, confident that he I, put yeah. his legs up and <laughs> crossed on. <them>. He's <laughs> like, Dude, you I started seen. out like playing golf here, and like Dill didn't even own clubs. I don't even think. Yeah, I and, started playing like two years ago. Yeah, and we've, so we've played before. Yeah, you should. Yeah, play we've played now, before. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I played with yeah. you too. Yeah, all of and us. And Dill was like, man, that just. That just does not seem like a sport I want to get into. I was like, dude, just come play. It's like you get to hit the piss out of a ball, and you try, like it's just fun. Drink beer and yeah, smoke a cigar sure. and have fun with your friends. And yeah. then because like I used for some reason, I feel like I've gotten better, but I've my scores went up higher. <laughs> like, I don't know how that works. Like you when I did, it, you love it so much, you want to hit the ball as many times as you can. Yeah. You're playing yeah. the opposite. But now Dill's got like spent the time and like got good clubs and like. He's he's like he's worked his ass. Blaming off. it he, on the clubs. That's now, what he said. Now, no, no, he is the, he is the better golfer, but that's gonna change when I get fitted for some clubs. Nah. So his ass is grass, <laughs> dude. I don't know what I just learned how to like compress the ball. And ever since I like did that, and it was like a two month swing change. Very annoying. You can't really hit good for two months, and then after that, it's like my pitching wedge is like my one fifty now, and like my and like up. It's crazy, but it's so enjoyable. Yeah. What's your favorite course to go to around here? Mm, probably Hermitage. Hermitage? So nice. You guys ball out. and I was about to say, if I had the money, I'd probably say Hermitage. I was going to say. Yeah. You go I, like, don't, I, go, I, don't, I don't got the money for yeah. that. I played it like four yeah. times maybe. But <laughs> Twilight's like, like 50 bucks. Though. I, mean, I haven't even you been go once. go anywhere else, it's 50 bucks. I really? Go, I have to go and do that. It's we fun. Go and play it's a beautiful course. If it's sometime. not there, though, it's Pine Creek. Pine Creek's, fun. Pine Creek's fun. Pine Creek's fun. Yeah, I do love But even there, it's like 45 bucks. You pay 10 more dollars and go play Twilight at Hermitage, and it's way nicer. 
True. Yeah, I'll so. have to get out there and do that. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all yeah. coming coming on and and doing this and having both you guys on meant made for a much different episode <laughs> yeah, than for that sure, first yeah. time. Real quick though, we I told I told McElwain we bring it up to to roast me a little bit. Yeah. So one of our first times hanging out together, <laughs> Nashville Gun Club with yeah. Charlie Moncaster, Boudreaux, and Lee Bird, and we got to I. I didn't grow up with guns, man. I yeah. grew up in New York. It was one of, the, one of the safest zip codes in America. I used to ask <laughs> my dad, because I started getting the country music, hearing all these songs about guns, and I'm like, Dad, why don't we have a gun? He's like, we don't need a like, Like, he's yeah. not against them, but he's like, we don't, like, when my pop-pop died, my aunt and uncle in Arkansas got all the guns. My dad right. didn't get any of them. But, I, so I bought a gun to go and go shooting <laughs> no with these way. guys. Like, I, I, I have a Mossberg 500, just a little basic Hell pump yeah. action, like, whatever. I barely use it, uh, whatever. Um, we went out that day, and... Well, we need to we go will. do some. We need to get you on some redneck shit. I got a big farm out in uh, Hendersonville. Yeah, we oh, got McElwain will come with us for that. He's got a full we'll set up the arsenal. electric skeet throw over the mountain or whatever. It's fun. Yeah, we shot Dale's last music video out there at my farm. We did. Yeah, yeah, no, we get out there and I think we had shot one time with Matt's gun and he's like, "Yo, boys, my gun is not shucking right." <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> Let me look at it. I didn't even. I don't even think I used the word shucking because I didn't know oh, what yeah. that meant. I was like, Guys, it's not think, coming out right. I think my gun's broken. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I walk over there. It. I'm like, you just bought this thing. <laughs> and me and Lee are looking at it. And Matt has put the shell brass in first. <laughs> and so, I don't even know how you got it in there because it shouldn't it was, do that. It was wedged and they were all looking at it. Lee's over there trying to fix it, whatever. And it just wouldn't come out. It put it in the wrong in way, there. dude. Yeah, and it was just stuck in there, and it was like that for months. That's and what then, she said. What was, run- <laughs> <laughs> what was running through your mind when you were holding the gun in one hand, the shell in the other, and you were like, which motherfucking way does this thing go? He's like, I wasn't even metal first. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't even looking at it. You just threw it in there. I wasn't even looking at it. I was like, damn, these guys clearly know how to shoot. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's give this. And I was just sticking it up in there, and it just. Also, what she said. Also, yeah, what she, she shot said. it one time. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be a clip for sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, where can people go to find you guys? Um, just Instagram. Yeah, you know, Instagram. Facebook, Snapchat, no, <laughs> no. Don't, don't, don't look for me on Snapchat. It's like underscore underscore, because like believe it or not, a lot of I tried to get just Screech as my Instagram name, and like That's I looked dumb. and looked and looked, and there's so many people that have the, like Screech as their. I'm like, I want to find like the original like whoever's got just plain Screech and buy it from them. It's probably the is the guy that played Screech still alive? He's dead. So it's not him. So it's not him. R.I.P. Yeah. yeah, it's not him. R.I.P. to the real Screech. So now I'm, I'm the real Screech. <laughs> Make it that the real. But screech. it is Screech. You could Ooh, try that. That's a the good real idea. Screech. It's not a bad idea. You try that. There you go. Hell yeah! Well, I appreciate you guys coming yeah, on. Dude, thanks it's, for uh, having us, man. Been a, been a pleasure. Thank you guys. Make sure you check out um, our boy Screech and Dylan Marlowe. Going to be a part of the Cole Swindell tour coming up, and Dylan's got a ton of songs out there. Make sure you say hi to Screech at a show. Go and bug him, but tap him on the back so he has to pull his damn in ears out. As a, as a tour <laughs> I hate manager, that shit we so love much. when that happens. I hate it so, so much. Um, <laughs> make sure you check out um, check out these guys, and um, as always, uh, make sure you subscribe, like, rate the podcast. Shout out to the sponsors, MRL. Yeah. Music Group, Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios, and our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. This has been the In the Round Podcast. We'll see you all next time.